Oh, I've got water here. Give me a glass, please. Don't drink too much now, right? Just forget about the dry hands, yeah? Forget about that. I had lots of respect growing up for my grandfather. People knew his name for miles on end. There was always an obligation on me to keep his name alive. And um, I think he'd be immensely proud to, to see his name, see his name on him, on the products throughout the shops. Come on. Two for the boys. An emotional connection to the past, but will the entrepreneurs manage to hold it together? when laying out plans for the future. Hello, Dragons. My name is Ashley Jones, and this is my wife, Kate. We're here today seeking £70,000 investment for 20% equity in our company, Selwyn Seaweed Limited, which produces light and healthy seaweed snacks. Selwyn was my grandfather and established a business over 50 years ago on the beautiful shores of the Gower Peninsula. Selwyn would gather his cockles, mussels and lava bread daily and sell them throughout the South Wales Valleys. In 2008, I visited Japan, and I was impressed by their mutual love for seaweed. Whilst there, I discovered flavoured roasted seaweed snacks, and after some research, decided this was a perfect new direction for our company. We've sailed the seven seas to source only the best, Dimond Ergorai, Grade A Nori Seaweed. And in July 2015, we launched three flavours of seaweed snack. Honey and Sesame, which has won a great taste award, sea salt and vinegar, and coconut and chilli. Seaweed flavoured food and drink are set to be the next big superfood trend in Europe. This presents a great opportunity for manufacturers such as ourselves, and we would love it if a dragon or dragons would join us on our adventure. Who would like to try some? Please. Yes. Please. <laughs> A passionate pitch by a couple with the sea in their blood. Let's get three flavours there. Kate and Ashley Jones are looking for £70,000 for a 20% stake in their seaweed snack business. Deborah Meaden has digested both pitch and product and appears to be grappling with a snack food dilemma. So I've eaten at all of my salt and vinegar I thought were lovely. Thank you. And actually, I agree with you, they're actually quite satisfying. But I'm slightly disappointed by the consistency. When I'm eating a snack, I kind of want to, you know, we're all used to tearing this off and pick up fingerfuls. This doesn't feel like a snack. I've got slightly sticky fingers and I'm not quite sure how to eat it. It kind of feels to me like it should be a little bit less alien. The seaweed comes in very thin forms, so it's almost like a sushi sheet. Um, there are obviously secondary processes where we can maybe make a sandwich or different ideas we can make the product thicker. But at this stage, this is what has been eaten around the world and that's the format we've decided to take on. Kate. Ashley. Hi. I'm a convert of seaweed. I just want to start by saying that. I spent a year in, in Japan and it's probably the most alien food that I have consistently eaten over a period of time ever anywhere in the world. But I actually think just because they eat it in Japan doesn't mean that it will translate over to a Western palate. It's quite hardcore, isn't it, as a, as a flavour? Do you think the UK market's ready for a seaweed snack? I absolutely adore the flavours. I snack on them all the time. My kids snack on them. And yes, it is relatively new to the UK market, but we believe that it has great potential. It's healthy, it's nutrient dense, and the flavours, I think, do appeal to the UK consumer. One question for you. How much does the package this cost? Is that retail? Uh, retail, 99 pence. OK, slight issue I have here. It is only four grams. Yep. So this is actually a snack for people who don't want to fill themselves up. It's like a weeny, weeny, weeny packet of crisps. I would much rather pick that up and feel better about the way I've eaten and... I get that, but it's like, here's a packet of crisps with a crisp in it. Yeah. Yeah, it is the same sort as of. other seaweed snacks on the market. I think as it is at the moment, uh, you're pioneering in a very risky market. You're producing what is, per gram, an extraordinarily expensive um, product. I would be more attracted to this business if it was starting with the raw seaweed and you were doing it locally, because then, then, because then it, would be, it, would be, it would be an interesting story. I really hope you end up producing your own. Um,
but um, I'm going to have to leave you to it. I'm okay. I'm out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Not authentic enough for Nick Jenkins, who becomes the first dragon out. Peter Jones has backed everything, from hot sauce to noodles, but are the numbers attached to this seaweed snack rock solid? So take me through the amount of money that's gone into this business. We spend personally about £275,000. Are you serious? Yeah. You but... spent £270,000? Yeah. We built a new factory, uh, which is, uh, we think is good enough for any supermarket. Do you own the factory? Um, no. We've built the factory on the previous owner's land, and we have a rent-free agreement. You built the factory out, and you don't own that factory? No, but I have a great relationship with the owners of the land, and we have a lease agreement for 20 years. I bet you do. You've just given them money for the next 20 years in advance on the back of a business that you haven't yet properly launched. Peter Jones is struggling to get to grips with their strategy. But does Tuka Suleiman share his concerns? Guys, it's all about the brand. You are entering a very, very competitive field. And unless you have a cost of production really low and you have an excess capacity that you can really churn out... Yeah, we could produce 20,000 packets of seaweed a day in an eight-hour shift. And how many you sell at the moment? No, not enough at the moment, no, obviously. We're only producing uh, three days a month at the moment because we have spare capacity. So you, so you actually run the factory three days a month? Yeah, and then we sell the stock then, so we have... Uh, it's just oh, and the, re yeah. the rest of the time, the factory stays idle? Yeah. A factory only operating three days a month is small fry for Tuka Suleiman. Deborah Meaden is a convert to the taste, but will she see seaweed as a solid investment? If I were you, I would try to do something different. I wouldn't do what, what everybody else is doing. I'd turn it into what I would call a snack. You know, I'd make it edible for me when I'm walking around because I'm not quite sure what it is. Nobody buys a snack that does that. So I'm afraid I won't be investing, so I'm out. I just feel that the consumer is, is just not there yet. Okay. You need to have a particular palate. You need to what, really yearn for new, exciting, healthy things. Of course, there is a market for that, but it's not a particularly big market. It remains quite niche. I don't think we're there yet. It's not for me, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, I'm out. Sarah Willingham and Deborah Meaden cast the business proposition adrift. It's down to Tuka Suleiman to revive the hopes and aspirations of a seaweed harvesting dynasty. I'm very concerned that you've got this production facility and you've got three days production per month. And my advice would be to find out what else can that factory make and keep the brand totally separate. Otherwise, you'll always lose money. I, I personally think you're very passionate about seaweed. I can understand why, but I'm not gonna be on that journey and I'm out. It just leaves me. <laughs> I do like the product. Thank you. Um, both of you are incredibly passionate and, and driven. And that's a positive thing, because people buy people first. The issue is that I still can't get my head round why you would spend a quarter of a million pounds on rent as opposed to buying the very thing that actually is an appreciating asset. Nobody in their right mind would pay 20 years in advance on a building. I've never heard of it in 30 years I of I guess business. that shows my commitment that I want to be there for 20 years running a business. I think that's bordering on ludicrous. We could do something else with the building, obviously. It's, it's ours for 20 years. So therefore, we could make different seaweed products or even leave the seaweed behind and do other food manufacturing in the premises. But that's but, not our intention. We, we, we truly believe in this product. My grandfather's been in business all his life. My father, my mother. We're passionate about 
being in business and doing the best we can. Yeah, but so, there's, there's a difference between passion and the direction of that in business and what you get out of it as a result. I would get concerned if I was to invest the speed at which you would make those emotional decisions and not really protect the very thing that would be important to me, which is my investment. I'm not going to make you an offer. So I'm out. OK. Thank you. So it's all over for the Kelp Crusaders, who failed to take a dragon back to Wales, but still have fire in their belly for the business. Very tired. Very well. Mm. We'll make it. We will. Yeah, for our boys. We're still passionate about our product and about our brand. And, um, and certainly determined to succeed.